Hi everyone, thank you for choosing to view this presentation today. My name is Aaron Barksdale and I am an emergency physician and faculty at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. I am presenting a recent study we conducted titled Dexamethasone Improves Wound Healing by Decreased Inflammation and Increased Vasculogenesis in the Mouse Skin Frostbite Model. This was performed in conjunction with our basic science research team headed by Dr. Yilong Lee and a couple of his teammates, Dr. Tu and Dr. Zhang, and then from a clinical standpoint, Dr. Mealman, Dr. Wadman, and myself. So a little background, what we do know about frostbite is there are injury patterns that occur during the freezing component and then even more so during reperfusion. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of good high quality evidence to support treatment plans. Uh, the only thing that's really well been shown is to instigate rapid rewarming as soon as possible. There is pretty cons consensus to implement NSAID treatment, especially during the reperfusion phase, but again, very low quality evidence to support this. As you can imagine, it is very difficult to try to conduct a prospective controlled trial in human subjects due to the difficulty in qualifying and quantifying frostbite injury patterns and making it consistent. The one thing that we do know is corticosteroids have demonstrated a beneficial effect in other types of ischemic and reperfusion injuries, uh, particularly in those that instigate the placement of a tourniquet on limbs and then removed and falling the injury patterns. So the purpose of the study is to determine if, if there's any effect from dexamethasone on wound healing, inflammatory response, and then vasculogenesis. We did receive approval for our institutional animal care and use committee. We had three different study groups, a sham, a control, and a treatment group with five to eight mice in each. All these mice were appropriately given anesthesia, and then we created a 2.5 centimeter in diameter area of shaved skin on their back to induce the frostbite injury. We used a couple ceramic magnets that were placed in dry ice for 15 minutes. The skin was folded, they were placed opposite of each other, and then exchanged every minute for five minutes. Now the sham group had the same procedure done, but with room temperature magnets. Control group then received normal saline intraperitoneal injections daily for seven days. And the treatment group received one milligram per kilogram of dexamethasone in the same pattern and duration. The four areas we looked at were the wound pattern that was photographed uh, several different days. As you can see there, the histology patterns, uh, evidence of cytokines, uh, interleukin-1 beta and tumor necrosis factor alpha, and then evidence of vasculogenesis uh, by expression of the protein marker CD31. Here's our statistical methods, which I'm not gonna get into due to the purpose of time. So here is visual representation of the wound healing process. You can see the frostbite group here in the DEX group, and then a bar graph showing that that injury pattern or wound was significantly less in diameter, even starting as soon as three days throughout the, the study period. Looking at uh, expression of leukocytes, you can see with our H&E stain here, I'll point out particularly at the two week time frame. This is the frostbite model on this side. You can see the prolific leukocyte infiltration here that you don't see on this side. And in the DEX group, you can see even evidence of sebaceous glands and hair follicles as soon as two weeks. With the Mason's trichrome staining, you see similar. The top is now the frostbite model. This is dexamethasone below. Again, I'll show you two weeks. A lot of leukocyte infiltration here, which has been mitigated here, and then evidence of sebaceous glands and hair follicles. As far as expression of our two cytokines, you see the sham group on the left, the frostbite in the middle, and the dexamethasone on the right. At one week and two weeks, there's definitely increased expression in the frostbite model, and they all kind of return back to baseline by the end of the study period. Finally, evidence of vasculogenesis by prominence of the protein CD31, starting at one week all the way through the study period, there's increased expression in the frostbite and dexamethasone group shown in red here compared to our frostbite world group. So the one thing I'd like to point out is that our sham group did not show any signs of tissue injury. Uh, it appears that dexamethasone, dexamethasone inhibited this leukocyte infiltration. It decreased levels of inflammatory cytokines and appeared to accelerate the development of this microvasculature. We do have some limitations. This is a superficial skin tissue model, so we cannot apply this to deep tissue injuries. Also, it's an animal, animal model, so it would be inappropriate to extrapolate this to human subjects. 
And thirdly, we did not measure free radicals, which it's well known that they have a significant relationship with cytokines, particularly in reperfusion injury patterns. So in conclusion, in this mouse frostbite model, it did appear that dexamethasone improved healing of the wound, it mitigated the inflammatory effects, and appeared to stimulate vascular genesis. Uh, obviously, we need some additional future studies to validate this, but this is uh, promising early research. I'd like to mention that this was accepted for publication in July of this year, the journal Wilderness and Environmental Medicine. If you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out and send me an email. Thank you very much for giving us your attention today.